So there have been financial bubbles going back hundreds of years, all the way to antiquity. But there's a major difference this time between the way bubbles have played out, and that is that we had access to an enormous amount of energy in the form of fossil fuels. Previous bubbles have been episodes of speculative excess. They have had a chance to get quite large, and the impact of them bursting has been significant. But we have now the largest bubble in human history, at least partly because we had the availability of enormous amounts of cheap energy. This is an energy inheritance. We, we discovered how to use energy that had been stored, sunlight stored, over millions and millions of years. And we found ways to use that to bring that into our economy. Now, there's, there's a tremendously tight coupling between energy and economic growth. So the amount of energy that you have will determine what is physically possible for an economy to achieve in terms of the development of socioeconomic complexity and differentiation of roles within society. In other words, how complex an interrelated a set of activities can you come up with as, as an economy. So we have built an enormous, enormously complex structure because we had access to fossil fuels. Cheap energy has been a major driver, not only of growth in, in the, the somewhat healthier, more normal sense, but also speculation. And in the latter stages of, of, of growth into the bubble phase, what you really have is speculation that becomes almost cancerous and the availability of cheap energy has driven that to a large extent. So we have benefited from this in a way in terms of material prosperity. It has allowed us to develop uh, our industrial society in the, in the way that, that we have seen it. But the era of cheap energy is coming to an end because the energy inheritance is finite. There's only a certain amount of it. And not only is there only a certain amount, but as we have used our energy inheritance, we've used the cheap, readily accessible supplies first. What we have left now are the difficult, expensive supplies. So that means we have to put more and more money and effort and energy into producing energy as we get into more and more difficult environments where it's harder and harder to get at these supplies. What that means is the net energy is a lot lower so that the surplus energy that you produce that is available for society's purposes is a lot less than it was in the early ages, in the early days of say the oil industry for instance. So you still produce a fair amount of energy, but an awful lot more of it has to be reinvested in energy production. So the surplus is smaller. The surplus amount of energy declines much more quickly than the total amount of energy that you can produce. So we are going to have a lot less energy in the future. That inevitably does mean that we will not be able to sustain our level of socioeconomic complexity we're going to have to move towards a simpler, less energy intensive society. But because fossil fuels have spurred the development of a financial bubble, it isn't going to be running out of energy that causes us problems in the very short term, because bubbles are self-limiting. Bubbles simply reach a maximum extent and implode. When they do, finance becomes the key driver to the downside for a number of years, and that's the period that we're moving into. Energy crisis will come some years further down the line after that but we're going to be looking at the bursting of a bubble. So financial changes happen much more quickly than changes in energy supply and demand. So the bursting of the bubble ends up being what the next few years will be remembered for. And you don't actually have to run out of energy for a bubble to burst. For instance, in the 1930s, or the expansion that led to the crash into the 1930s, there was plenty of energy, there was plenty of resources and cheap labor, and there was still a depression simply because a bubble burst. 
This time we have the bursting of a much larger bubble, but that will be complicated by the fact that we will no longer have large surpluses of energy and resources. So initially we will have a lot less money because the bubble bursts and crashes the money supply, but the crashing of the money supply will also lead to the crash of the energy supply as there isn't enough money to develop new sources, new very expensive sources by this point, and there isn't enough money to maintain infrastructure. So we're then going to be looking at energy crisis and energy putting a hard lid on what recovery we can expect in economic terms.